Welcome to Electron Line. So what is the mass of our galaxy? Well, it turns out that the estimate has gone more uncertain, has become more uncertain than it used to be. It used to be a fairly straightforward answer because they had estimated the number of stars in our galaxy to be about 250 billion. So what they did was they took certain sections of the galaxy, they tried to estimate the density of the stars, then they extrapolated to the entire galaxy, and the number came out to be 250 billion. And then from the HR diagram, we realized that the typical star is about 40% the mass of the sun. So all we have to do is multiply 250 billion times 0.4 times the mass of the sun, and out came 150 billion, 100 billion times the mass of the sun. And it was kind of an accepted value. But then, as you saw in earlier videos, we really don't know exactly what the structure of a galaxy looks like. And that estimate of 250 billion stars may not be that good of an estimate. And so, it has come to the point where the numbers that you'll find when you try to look it up will vary anywhere from 100 to 500 billion times the mass of the Sun. So, there's a lot of variation. And also, they think that the galaxy may be a little bit bigger than it used to be, and that's why the estimates have gone up as well. Then also you have to account for the fact that there's interstellar matter, which also accounts for perhaps about 10 billion times the mass of the Sun as well. And then, of course, we have the equation, the orbital velocity equation, where we have the square root of g times the mass of what's inside the orbit divided by the radius of the orbit. And then we can take that equation and find the mass. And of course, when we begin to use that and try to find the velocity of stars and nebulas further and further out, try to calculate what the mass of the galaxy is, they did come up with estimates that were definitely bigger than 100 billion times the mass of the Sun. But then, of course, did that include the dark matter that we think is there as well. So it's not as easy an answer as you would think. Definitely you can say that it's probably at least 100 billion times the mass of the Sun, perhaps more. Is it 500 billion? That's probably way on the high end of the estimate. I don't think it's quite nearly that high. And I think most estimates will be around 100, 150, 200 billion times the mass of the Sun. So that's probably a reasonable answer, as you can tell. It's a lot more difficult to figure out the mass of our own galaxy than to figure out the mass of galaxies around us, which we can see and photograph and estimate much better because we have much better vantage points on what those galaxies look like than our own. So, turns out, if you were to answer the question, you said 100 billion times the mass of the Sun, you're probably pretty close to what we think it is. And that's the answer to our question. But that doesn't include the dark matter. It does not include the dark matter. And I believe that when the estimate says 500 billion times the mass of the Sun, that they probably are including the dark matter as well. Because the dark matter is more than the visible matter. The dark matter is estimated to be about five times the visible matter, right? So, so yeah, and it doesn't always say, is, you know, when, they, when you look up the answer and they say 500 billion times the mass of the Sun, it doesn't say, oh, that includes 100 billion times the mass of the Sun because of visible matter and then five times as much for the dark matter or something like that. So yeah, it's not it's not as clear cut as you would think. And well, uh, inter with the interstellar matter. those are all the nebulas and the dust and all that. There's still about enough to make another 10 billion suns. So we're going to be making stars for a while for a number of years to come.